Hi, LCC 150D, Statistics for Informed Decision Making. A few notes on Chapter 4, Scatter Plots and Correlation. Scatter plots are going to be explain how we correlate a set of numbers. Now let's say you wanted to know if there was a correlation between two variables. For instance, as your car gets older, does the value of that car in terms of resale value go down or up or is there a correlation? And you probably know from real life that there is a correlation. If you study more hours, do you get a higher grade? Is there a correlation? So we look at a couple of variables and then we see if there's a connection between them. Word of warning, actually a statement of warning. Correlation does not mean causation. Just because there's a correlation between two sets of variables does not mean one causes the other. So let's look at some of the variables here. If you remember from algebra, you had an independent variable and a dependent variable. The independent was the x, the dependent was the y, and one dependent on the other. Well, explanatory response variables are very similar. The response variable is the result of an outcome. So in other words, if you studied more hours, do you get a higher grade? The grade depends. The grade is the response variable. The explanatory variable, which would go on the x, is the number of hours. So sometimes there is no distinction. So, and is there, so they ask this question here, which is similar to it in the book, and you can take a look at this. You can pause and look and see what the answer is. I'm not really concerned about that right now. What I want to do is focus on scatter plots and correlation. Scatter plots are a way to look at data and give you a visual to see if there's any connection at all, a correlation. So we're going to look at the uh, plotting the explanatory in in, on the horizontal axis and the response variable on the vertical x-axis. So here's a relation between SAT scores and percent of high school grads taking the SAT. And you can see the percent of high school grads taking the SAT and the mean SAT versus score. This looks very messy. It's in your book. I'm not concerned about that. So we're looking for overall patterns and deviations from this pattern. We want to see the form, direction, and strength. I will show you how to do scatter plots instead of doing it by hand. I will show you how to do correlation instead of doing a long equation. What I want you to be able to do for the rest of the semester is be able to explain. Remember, it's informed decision making. Look at your results and talk about it. Write about it. Think about it. Reflect upon it. That's what I'm looking for. Don't give me a two-word answer. Don't give me a one-sentence answer. Give me a dissertation. I want to know that you know everything. You may even want to do this for your own research paper as well, comparing two variables and seeing if there's a pattern and so on. Outlier is very important, as you remember from last video when we talked about the normal curve. So talk about those as well. Is there a linear relationship? The stronger the linear relationship, the more correlation. So the direction, is it positive, going up? Is it negative, going down? It's still a, a correlation if it goes down. Just because it goes down doesn't mean there's a correlation. As I mentioned, the price, the selling price of cars as they get older. So you can see that there's a, a positive association between SAT scores and GPA, and here are the cars and the selling price as a negative association. So we're going to look at, at some of these. You can take a look at this. And also remember, you do have these slides available as well. If you go on Blackboard, they're available, so you can take a look at them f in, uh, uh, if you want more time to do that. Okay, so I'm going to escape from this for a second and go to the stats book, and we're going to look at, I'm going to go to an example here that's in your book, which is example 4.4, .4, do heavier people burn more energy? How do you make a scatter plot? Well, let me tell you that you can go to your the site, the online, where you take the online quizzes. There are applets. And you can find the applet for this particular one. So you can go and find the data, and the data sets. There's an ex exercise 4.4, which is what we're looking at. And 4.4 .4 happens to be on page 99. There's the data for it. It's already inputted. You could input this yourself, by the way, if you wanted to do it for any type of, of problem. And there's a scatter plot of this. You can see the points. Okay, over here is one set of data, over here the other set of data. So there's a scatter plot here in the correlation and regression. Don't worry about regression right now, that's chapter five. But the correlation right there, that's what we're looking at. 0.8765. Is that good? Is that bad? That's where you have to decide if it's going to be something that you're going to use. So correlation coefficient is measures the strength. The larger the magnitude of R, closer to 1. The direction, 
and so this one, what it said was a, let me find it again, 0.8765. You have to decide whether that's strong or not. Now, let's go on to the next one. Correlation has to be between positive one and negative one. So if it's a positive one, negative one, and closer to those numbers, the higher, the, the, the better your co correlation is. You can see correlation zero, nothing's happening here, no correlation. Very weak, negative 0.3. Getting stronger, but still not very strong. Now you can see there's a, there's a te tendency to go down. Very strong here, 0.9. And this is almost a straight line going down. So this is a high correlation, but it happens to be negative, negative 0.99. So we are going, this, these are examples of correlations. And I'm going to show you how you can do all this using Excel. So we're going to go back to the to the book, and I'm going to look at uh, some exercises here. And we're going to look, which is on page 115, problem 425. I'm sorry, 426, data on dating, which tells you is there do women who are taller date men who are taller? Here's your data. So I'm going to do an Excel chart here. There's the data. I'm going to get rid of this so you don't even see this for a second. And get rid of this. And we'll work it backwards here. This is the data, women's height, men's height, and inches. And I'm going to highlight what I want graphed, these two columns. Insert. Now this time we do a scatter plot. I choose the first one, and here's my scatter plot. So I make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. And I'm also, you, like you have to do for every single graph is put a title. So that happens to be what we're looking at. I want axis titles as well. This happens to be men's heights and the units, inches. As you can see, when I'm entering this, it goes in the function bar up here. And the X is title for this is going to be the women's heights. So, and that's also in inches. All right, so now we have the graph. Is this a correlation? Can you tell? It's kind of tough to tell. The plots are sort of all over the place. Plus, you don't have a lot of data. Remember, the more data you have, the better the results you'll get. So, we want to find a correlation. So, we're going to do that in this way. Here is the example of finding a correlation. I'm going to show you. There's the equation. Very fun to do, right? And this is what you'd have to do if you were taking a bunch of data. Here are two columns of data. You'd have to do all this math, find this, and then you get a correlation of 0 0.809, which is kind of strong. But Excel will do it for you. So let's go back to our Excel chart. You always want to find a, a formula, so you put an equal sign. That starts everything into math form. Let's go to statistics this is the statistical category and go down to Corel C-O-R-R-E-L there's a correlation okay you, you want to compare two sets of numbers it's waiting for you to compare them so you highlight just the numbers for women highlight just the numbers for men keep pressing this icon you're okay and it's 0.57 and just so I can Remember that, I'll write that in there. So the correlation is 0.57. So what do you think? Is it high or not? So that's what we're looking at here. It's not very high. So you'd have to make that decision. That's what you'd have to do. So that's what all of this stuff does. And you can quickly skip this by using the Excel chart that we had just had over here. And also you can use this thing, the statistical applet, which is data sets, or you can enter your own data if you want to. You can get rid of all of that. Now enter what we just did in this problem over here and enter this the women's heights and the men's heights in here and you can find the scatter plot and you can find the correlation. Well, obviously there's no data so that there's nothing coming out of there. Remember, I want you to be able to explain the results. That's what I'm looking for. So if you're looking for the final answers for these things, does this mean that you have a high correlation? That's what I'm looking for. That's it for today. Talk to you next time.